Hi, bakers. How are ya? Bakers, haters, LBL defenders, and more. How are ya? How are ya? I am having some type of an allergy attack. I don't know what's going on. My face has hives and everything, and my throat's a little sore. So, you know, if I take more sips of my decadent drink, please forgive me. Let me make sure. Let's see if I can give you a different angle of the of the snow globe. Oh, I'm going to give you there. See, that's when I went to New York. I went to New York when the Twin Towers were there. Um, so the limo was driving by the Twin Towers. And um, I said to the people I was with, look at the Twin Towers, look at the Twin Towers. And we were looking and this guy in the car and next to us was vigorously picking his nose. And so it was kind of like weird because what do you look at? The Twin Towers or the guy picking his nose? You know, I mean, he was going, I mean, like, like inner brain picking of the nose. Like not even like a normal picking the nose. Like the worst nose picking you could ever imagine in your life. So that was the week before the Twin Towers fell. So that was my little thing of the Twin Towers. So it's special to me to have this snow globe of exactly the way that uh, New York was when I saw it for the once and one and only time. And I can't wait till you guys figure me out so I can tell you about all my life adventures and all that good stuff. So there we go. Okay. So anyway, one of my... Uh, friends on the troll patrol. Let's just try. We're just going to call what I do troll patrol. Okay. So one of my, um, members of the troll patrol reached out to Irma and, uh, asked her what the fuck she was doing. Like asked her, what the fuck? And really asked her, what the fuck? Um, just like, what the fuck are you doing? Like going over there? Like, ma'am, you look like a nice lady. What are you doing going over to somebody's house who is clearly not a nice lady? And basically, a member of the troll patrol got the, let me ask you this. Are you a Christian? And member of uh, troll patrol said, Yeah. Well, then you will understand why I have befriended her and why I am her friend. Maybe it's that she needs a friend. Like, oh my, no, no. Number one, LBL hates Jesus, okay? She's referred to God a couple of times lately, so I guess they're on decent terms, but she freaking hates Jesus and she will go into a freaking rant about how much she hates Jesus. And I mean, she hates Jesus, like hates Jesus. And I don't know that I have ever in my life heard of somebody saying that they hate Jesus. I mean, hate Jesus. Like, she's Jewish, okay? She's Jewish. Um... I'm baptized Catholic. I'm Catholic by birthright. Okay. I had a number of Mormon friends. So, you know, I probably um, went to more Mormon churches than most. I, I lived in a very small town. And uh, on Sunday, Mormons had church until like three and then you could play. And... So basically, my town was a ghost town unless you went along with your buddy to um, to, to church, the Mormon church. And then afterwards, we'd play in the um, big Mormon land area and play hide and seek and stuff. It was super cool, right? But yeah, you had to, you know, get through six hours of freaking, you know, Mormon babble. But uh playing with it and my, my, my Mormon friends are among the best and in fact one of my stories I'll tell you one of these days Mormons saved my freaking life 
okay? If you, if you are in a desperate situation, okay, it's not going to be the Catholics, it's not going to be the Christians that, you know, they're born again, especially, that are going to, you know, really have the resources to save your freaking life. It's going to be your Mormon neighbor. And I would have done the same for them. Like, you know, if, um, if a Mormon is being persecuted around me by conversation or otherwise, um, it doesn't happen. And they, I educate them and tell them how the freaking Mormon saved my life. So anyway, um, apparently this is some kind of freaking God thing that Irma's doing that, you know, because she loves, she loves, um, God, she's doing this. And I just wonder, has Irma heard LBL go off about Jesus? I mean, you can't, you can't say that you're a Christian because if you break that word down, it has Christ. You can't break it down and be like, are you a Christian? Uh, what what does that matter? Okay. And like I say, if you're going to break down the word, it's Christian. It involves Christ. Well, LBL hates Christ. Um, LBL has um, brainwashed. Okay. I mean, I think that there's maybe a mutual attraction between the two of them. Um, and maybe they could just hook up and go to freaking Love Island with a couple of freaking wild dogs named Pom Pom and Friday Toby at this point for all I freaking care. Because the way in which Irma spoke to my friend, it's just crass. Just crass. I don't know who the hell she thinks she is. Um, it's just, no. I mean, it, and so this is some kind of a Christian thing. And she says, she says to my friend, did you know that those horrible women have made it so LBL cannot even get another online job? Can you believe they did that to her? Did you know that? You know what? Nobody did anything to her. Okay. Number one. LBL was given a position in Sensi that she never earned, okay? I don't know how many of you have uh, dipped your toes into the MLM world, but um, to have attained the position that LBL got so fast is near impossible, okay? Her friend Shawnee had been in Sensi for quite a while, and Sensi wanted her BFF LBL to go to these conventions with her. And so I believe that their sales were shared. So it propped LBL up really fast and she reached director status. And, you know, reaching those statuses isn't because you, you know, have done something amazing. It's that you've had enough people that um, bought from you. Okay. So, you know, it's the, it is the typical pyramid. It's a pyramid scheme. I mean, I don't like to call it a pyramid scheme because, but anyway, um, so, okay. So let's say that you sell to three people and then those people sell to those, each three sells to three, blah, 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 blah. That triangle builds you up. And then each of those below you has to sell a certain amount for you to be propped up. So like, um, there's no way that LBL was selling that product in a way that would have made me buy it. In fact, when I was listening to her sell the product, I had zero interest in it. And I, in fact, had a very um, bad opinion of the product um, because of the way that she was um, representing it and the way that she would use um, that product and uh, to intimidate others. Like she'd go on there crying and babbling crying and babbling, crying and babbling and saying, you know, you know what you can do to cheer me up? You can order some Scentsy. That's what you can do. Okay. And she was, you know, freaking forcing the Scentsy on everybody. And I have zero doubt that she made up, uh, alternate profiles to be separate customers to boost herself up. There is no way she was working that. I'm telling you, um, I am, in an MLM or two or three or four. And I'm going to tell you that if I bend over and fart sideways, that could be reported and I could, I could lose the privilege of 
representing that brand. There are so many things that you have to do when you are representing that brand that it's like 40 pages of compliance. And I mean, you would not believe, you would not believe what you are signing up for. If, you, if you're in an MLM and you haven't read your compliance and what you can and cannot do, I suggest you do so because, uh, you know, the majority of them are women and women are terrible to other women and they'll do anything to tear one down and to get one um, pulled down so they can go higher. So you have not only this compliance, but you have all of your, they should be sisters, but they are competitors. And so they will report you for anything. So, um, it's ridiculous. And it's it's a morality clause. That's basically what it is. So if I am out, you know, selling my stuff, you know, my tablecloth has to hit a certain point. I have to have this angle this way. I have to have this this way and this this way. And if I don't, I can be reported and I can I can lose the privilege of selling that brand, okay? These brands are big brands and they're very careful about what's associated with their image. So you have some wildebeest coming on, screaming, pulling down their pants, being drunk, driving distracted, driving drunk, calling people the C word and Riri and everything else whilst screaming and bullying people into buying that product and you think that you're a victim and you want to convince others that you're a victim? Um, I lost a lot of respect for Irma. If she can believe that LBL is a victim of other women making it so that she can't ever get another online job, then she's about stupid as the day is long. Okay. Um, and I'm a Christian. Okay. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's like, it, okay. And if, if that were true, then how come LBL has managed to lose every single job that she's ever had in about a week in person, in person at Walmart, wherever, you know, from Walmart to selling sunglasses, wherever she was, she'd lose that job. Well, that wasn't these mean, mean ladies at the, at the GB doing this to her. This is her this is her that she can't manage to get up and do anything in the day except for go and take care of herself and go and look in the mirror 82,000 times and primp and pose like she's in the middle of freaking Vogue. I have never seen anybody so vain in my life. She sits there and just puckers up and pouts. And like, Why? What the hell are you doing? Why? Why? Shallow Hal here. You know that movie where, you know, Shallow Hal couldn't see herself. No, I think the guy couldn't see that this chick was, you know, a little large, like about the size of small whale. He saw her as a superhero, supermodel. That's what LBL is. Like her mind is like the shallow hell, hell shallow hell brain where she sees herself and apparently like circus mirrors or something. She sees something that the rest of the world doesn't. Now, does she have a platform? Yes. Does she have a way of collecting people and, and making a platform? Yes. So if the 10,000 subscribers that she had were watching the product and whatnot, then yeah, she could sell a, quite a bit. But I never saw her promoting the product and showing it off in a way that would make me buy I saw her cramming, you know, seven cubes together, you know, and having 22 freaking sensies in a one bedroom area. And that to me was like, well, they must not be strong enough for anything. You have to use, you know, how many, why are you mixing them? Isn't one scent nice enough? Um, so through time, you know, through the vendor circuit, I've developed a nice relationship with another sensey woman and she busts her butt. You know, I mean, she is working it. I mean, she has a full-time job and sensey is her full-time job, you know, going all over the state, two states, 
uh, I think even the third state, you know, and just goes and just brings all this stuff on the road. And it's just, you know, a couple of hours of setup and whatnot. So you can really see what it is and whatnot. And, um, and see and touch and smell. And I, you know, fell in love with a couple of clothesline, <laughs> clothesline and, uh, lemon, gosh, lemon sorbet, something like that, lemon sorbet and clothesline is my favorite. But I use one cube every three days for like each level of my home, let's say that. Um, and the beautiful thing is, is that clothesline is strong enough that you can't smell my litter boxes. It used to be a real problem and um, now you can't even tell I have cats. I mean, so, but that's the kind, you know, I didn't want any foo-foo, this, this, that, you know, I wanted something clean that, you know, is a natural smell like, oh, you just got done hanging laundry, you know, like that, you know, that, that's, that's the kind of way I am. I like a clean, crisp smell. She would like put like, like I say, oh, that's strawberry. I'm going to mix this strawberry with a lemon, with a vanilla, with the, with the purple bergamo. I'm like, what the fuck? And, um. It just was odd and, and like she never would really have any inventory that she would show and showcase it in a way that I'd be like, I've got to have that warmer. It was just her being her insane maniac ways. So I do not see that and see that she could have earned the amount of sales to have gotten where she was with Sensi. I think that she probably was on her last warning with them that she had not been hitting sales minimums. With a lot of your MLMs, you have a, well, probably all of them, you have a selling minimum. And if you can't make that, you're done. And, and, and that's how most of us in the MLM, we end up buying enough stock of our own, of our own to pay that. So you have the minimum and then you go and you try and pimp your wares, you know, at vendor events and whatnot, which are exhausting. And you can go and you can set up everything and everything and no one will show up, you know, and you did all that, you wasted everything and you have all this stock and I don't know. So, no, Irma, those big mean ladies at the GB did not make it so that LBL cannot have another job. Now, in true LBL fashion, she had to copy Irma. Because, you know, she had to copy her friends when she was little. Like, if they got a dolly, she had to go get the exact same dolly and then name the dolly the exact same name as the, what her friend named the dolly. Like, that's just freaking psycho stalker crap, okay? And so she put on this big hideous pile of um, bracelets and then was like tugging on them and everything. She's like, oh, and this one I have. Oh, this is the charm from when Burke was, was born and I never take it off. And then this one is the one of my father and, and this charm and this this bracelet and I never take them off. You know, I never do. I, I, I don't take them off to wash. You know, I just take, I just grow, go and gross. Because, you, you know, a couple of years ago, we were treated to that show of her showing how she washes her face. And it was just like, she just gives herself a freaking bird bath every day. Like she just leans over the sink in bird baths. And so I'm just imagining, oh yeah, she doesn't take off all the jewelry because she doesn't take it off when she washes or anything. And you know, it's not real or anything. So, you know, it's all tarnished and everything. It'd be green, but you couldn't tell because she has all her freaking prison tattoos on her wrist. So I don't know. I don't know. So, but she had to do it because she loved the way that Irma had a stack of bracelets. So Irma, that wonderful Christian that she is, you know, being so nice to that Lori Beth. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that's that. That's, that's that. She's got to, she's got to copy Irma. And then she has to be talking about, um, her sappies, you know, cause let's all remember Irma wasn't a friend. She's a sub, okay? How many times did LBL refer to her as a sub every freaking 60 seconds, okay? 
So basically her new, she was like calling, she was like making this war call out, you know, to everybody. She's like, I want to have a big Lori Beth night, you know, where it's just me sitting and talking with my regulars. You know, I want my regulars because apparently Irma didn't, you know, fill her need for the day. Um, So the other day she was like, where are they? Where are they? I want to know where you are. Like, I want some good, good regulars like Honey Bee and Tay Tay and Helen and Maria Diana and Marsha Hacker. Where are you? Like, I want all of you to get I want all of you together. I need my regulars. I'm really depressed and I've got a big thing. And right, let's just do a big old Lori together night. So all of the tribe came together in subby subland for her and she did this thing and she hashtagged it to the hottest stories out there. Okay, she hashtagged Trisha Paytas pregnant Pater Mon accident. Get ready with May. Mary Tyler Moore. I mean, just like everything you could, like, whilst saying, whilst saying that she is not like the other YouTubers, you know, because she's real and she's the realest YouTuber and she's so honest and she does not ask for subby. She's not one of those ones who's going to say, you know, why don't you put the subscribe button so every time you know that I'm, I've made a video, you get this, you hit the subscribe and, and share. I don't do any of that. Oh, bullcrap. Freaking you hashtagged every top news story. What is that? What is that? She says she doesn't do any of that for views. Um, Yeah, right, right, right. You do that for views. Yes, you do. Oh, and it was a bag sale. It was a bag sale. So she has her hideous bags. She had a couple of um, hideous, very, very low-grade fake Birkins. One was a petal pink that I can't imagine anybody using. Not even her. Not even her. And um, and then she kept pimping this one guest bag because she was saying, this, you know, it's a monogram. It's the one that everybody wanted because it looked like the Gucci one. And if you don't believe her, just look on the eBay because they're going for $350 and $400. Like, bull crap, you got that thing for 17 bucks at Marshall's. You shut up. And then um, I think the low-grade Birkins she probably got from Edward. Edward is the um, man in the Philippines that sends her, um, all of the counterfeit shit. And, uh, so she had those and then she goes to the freaking Dooney and Bark bag. This is, this is, this is the satchel. We had to hear about that mother freaking bag, um, a few months ago when she got her paws on it. And, and now see, I have that exact bag, but because I'm actually a stylist person, I have it in black with the gold hardware. And it is a beautiful bag. Like, I have bought most of my handbags, you know, from thrift stores and stuff. And I've gotten good bags from thrift stores. You know, I'm not saying that I don't, you know. But it's just I don't have them at the same time that other people would. Because, you know, I put my children and my family first. There's no money for me. So, you know, if I'm schlepping at the Goodwill and I find... um an old coach bag or whatever, or, um, an old Dooney, I'm going to get it. And I, I clean it up. I restore it. And nobody knows the better, you know, they always compliment my bags, but by golly and gosh, dang it. Um, I, I decided, you know what? Two years ago, I said, I said, you know what? I said for once in my life, I want a brand new handbag. Like brand freaking spanking new that I choose. And Hubber said, you deserve it. You know, show me and we'll put it on the credit card and, you know, I'll pay it off. That's okay. Pick what you want. And I did. And I picked that gorgeous freaking Dooney. And um, it is heavy. Like it feels like, like probably 10 pounds. It's a very heavy, solid, beautiful bag. Okay. Um. Since the pandemic hit, I don't carry a handbag because I don't want to be putting it anywhere, you know. And it's kind of funny. If you look around, I've, I really don't see other people carrying their big handbags either. I think it's kind of a thing. I've just been carrying a wristlet, so it's not anything that ever has to touch any uh, surfaces or anything. So when she got this freaking bag a couple months ago, I was going, okay, that is a two-year-old bag. And I bet you she got it on QVC clearance because she was just 
she wouldn't shut up about it. It's like, okay, yeah, you got a bag. If I, did I tell anybody when I got it? No. You know, when I wear it out, I get a lot of compliments on it. it like, I, like I say, because it's gorgeous. And like mine has the inside red suede lining with uh, jade green lining. Uh, so it's like part red and part, part green. And I got the matching wallet, but I was thinking, yeah, this would be a clear, this would be a clear out on QVC. So she probably got it from that and was making payments. And I figured she would have sent it back. But so here she is trying to pimp it. And she said she has two payments left on it. I, I'll have two payments left on it. You know, if you're not going to offer a decent price, you know, I'll keep it. I'll keep all of my bags. You know, you're not going to get these bags for $25 or $15, you know. You got to, you know, and if you want one of these bags, you got to DM me. You got to DM me. You know, and so then she's like leaning and huffing over and saying her email address and no one can understand it, but she just thinks that everybody can. So for those of you who are watching who didn't quite get it, it's LBL, God, what is it? LBL 42863 at Yahoo, I think. I think so. So she's sitting there pimping purses. Now, what she's doing here is she is trying to imitate HRH because she's always like, oh yeah, well, I don't do that. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like that. If I'm selling something, I say, it. And, and you know, HRH, she sits there and she says that she's not selling, but she's selling while she's talking. So are you. That's exactly what you're doing. You're imitating and copying HRH, your big lady love crush. So uh, she was doing that now. Somehow in that, she went to the topic of Trisha Paytas. Now, Trisha Paytas would like to be addressed by they, them. So I admit that I'm not 100% um politically correct on everything. So I'm sorry if I say she is pregnant because I guess you are supposed to say they are pregnant. But if you say they are pregnant, it makes you sound like a bumbling freaking moron. So I'm going to say Trisha is pregnant. That's how I'm going to say that. And she said that Trisha said that she manifested it, that she manifested this baby inside her. So I don't, I don't know because I don't follow Trisha Paytas. I, I think she's freaking disgusting, but, uh, I, I, and that's just because I saw the way that she made fun of, fun of her friend who actually had disassociative dis identity disorder. And LBL of course took on that and started acting like she was an expert in the subject. And I'm not going to touch that with a 10 foot pole, but anyway, um, she's saying that. And going on and on. And and she says she understands how Trisha did that. How she manifested it. Because she manifested Burke. She stopped taking her birth control. Yeah, I'm sure she didn't freaking tell Goody either. I'm sure that, you know, she stopped taking that freaking pill the night she saw him on the ship. I don't even think she ever would have taken the pill. Because she was so eager to get baby batter. She would have, you know, I'm sure that she was slithering those lips all over, like toilet seats in the men's bathroom on those ships trying to go and get some freaking baby better. I'm telling you. So anyway, do I think that she was on the birth control pill and then, and then she talked it over with her husband and they decided they were going to have a child at the age of 35. I mean, 35. She had Burke when she was 35. That's, you know, now that he's 18, I mean, 20 years ago, whatever. That's a high risk prank. That's a high risk pregnancy. And, you know, and she, of course, had to have a C-section because, you know, she was too lazy to freaking push. And like I say, don't come for me. I've had both, both regular and a C-section. So I'm not saying that people who have had a C-section are, are not doing that. I'm saying that LBL herself would have laid there and been like, ah, help me. Give me my drugs. Oh, help me. I want my mother. I want the ice chips. I want a hamburger. You know what I mean? They would have just freaking cut that baby out just to shut her the fuck up. Just knock her out. And you know that? Knock her out with a freaking horse tranquilizer and just shoot her. Like, shoot her like a bear. Like, if she probably got up to waddle up to go to the bathroom with that big old ass. And they were like, just shoot the tranquilizer gun now to the DNR. And they were like, booming at it. And then just cut the baby out. And then they were like, okay, well, give it to Carol. And then she sat there and it wouldn't shut up again. So they probably just kept 
putting her to sleep. But anyway, she manifested Burke because she is God. Yep, she said she is God. She's got that God is inside of her and she is God. LBL is God. I don't know what to do with that information. Um, but given her way of hating Jesus, does that really jive with her hating Jesus if she is God? Because... You can't, I, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know, know enough about Judaism, I guess. I, if that's what they're teaching, because she, she likes to represent the Jews, you know. And if Jews, if saying Jews is a pejorative, I'm sorry, but it's just, you know, and she uses their Jewish ways to um, make herself feel better than others and act like she's better than everybody because she's a Jew. It just gets on my last nerve, but anything she can do to act like she's better than somebody else she does, you know, whether it's, you know, I don't know, because she's from the Brookline, uh, because her mother took her to lunch every day, and her mother used to take her to lunch every day, and then shopping and buy her something pretty if she was a good girl and didn't clomp her, clomp her feet too bad. Anyway, I digress. So, because she is God, and God is her, and God is inside of her, and she manifested Burke, she is now manifesting a big, big black man um, to be inside of her with God. And he is specifically, she's felt him inside of her. Um, he's a tall black man with rough hands. She's um, felt the rough hands. Now, her previous interactions with the chocolate man have involved her, um, she loves talking about how she loves them to slap her face with their big dong. Um, so, uh, now I'm not, I'm no expert or anything, but some of those, some of those black men are harboring a freaking elephant's trunk. Not kidding you. It'll be like totally normal. You're dating, you know, and, and they don't expect anything to be abnormal and then you know and then things get hot and heavy and you know and then all of a sudden you're like oh, it's the size of a bat and then you realize that you know you can get a tonsil cleaning via vaginal ways but it, 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 I'm not kidding you so um LBL has apparently done her research you know for the chocolate men too and uh, I think she likes it because Based on her anatomy, like from my anatomy, like I say, you know, from the bottom up, the bottom of my tonsils got tickled, if you just kind of think about that. Um, like my whole entire body length. <laughs> I'm trying to um, give this as scientifically as I can. Um, so for her, I don't think that a chocolate gentleman's um, elephant trunk would really even touch because I, that big ass that big ass that big huge cottage cheesy looking freaking ass yeah i don't know maybe that's why they just sit there and fling it in, in her cheek and eh, i don't know so she's god and she's making a black man inside of her um personally i think that she identifies as a big black man that likes women a lot. And more power to her, I guess. So trying to get through that and understand that this is what she thinks. Wow. She is putting on a ton of freaking war paint and primping and prop. I can't talk. I can't say it primping and posing nonstop. Like she must have a couple of little meows there. And she sits there and she's like voguing, like looking at herself, looking at herself sideways, looking at herself straight on, looking at another angle, going up, going down, just eyeballing herself. Like she says to lay down and have herself. I mean, it is bizarre. I have never seen anybody look at themselves the way that she looks at herself. So she's talking like this while she's slathering on makeup. And I don't know what look she's going for. She says, Mary Tyler Moore, I see drag queen. Um, 
So, yeah, that's there. And then she went back and dabbled about her purses again, you know, reminding people that that's what she is doing. And uh, then there was this big zoom, zoom, because, you know, she freaking, I think she lives on a highway. I think that this thing is like right there. And um, the automobile noise is have to be a welcome sound to the neighbors other than listening to her shriek and everything because she did I caught a little glimpse of this other video that she had done I haven't watched it yet but it was oh Saturday morning rough house so she'd lay down underneath the bed and grab at Friday's genitals and um all you could see was this hand coming up with prison tattoos and grabbing Friday to be inappropriately I can't imagine what that sounds like to the neighbors. Um, it, yeah. So, uh, and she starts blabbing. Oh, hi, Irma. Oh, yes. Well, I went ahead and I used the, the rest of the lemon. And here she goes again in her crap. Like I say, if you ever, like, like listening to her would be really good for people who want to barf, who are in that stage of an illness or something and they just want to freaking barf and they can't find anything to make them barf. Because anything that she talks about that she makes... It's just this most bizarre food combination that no one would make. She says she freaking took, I took that lemon and I squeezed the last of it and I put some salt on it and I took it and I put it over a can of beets and then I microwave it. It was some crap like that. And then, and then I put the olive oil on it and I put a can of beets and then I took the, the zest of the lemon and I'm going, you wouldn't leave that lemon alone. So, I don't think the lemon survived two days. She could not stop fondling that freaking lemon. Like I say, she treated it like Irma had hatched it herself. That this had came out of Irma's ass and her hair goes down to her ass and gets right now. I'm gross. Anyway. So, she was just talking about her disgusting cooking habits. Like, she's freaking sous chef. She's just like, oh, yeah. And here's a secret with the balsamic vinegar. And then, yeah, I think I used the whole bottle of that, too. Or I think, you know, and then, and then the salt and then, then the lemon and all. Oh, yeah. And here, here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. Like, nobody. Nobody is going to want what you cook. And I don't even believe you cook. I, uh, I mean, a can of freaking beets. Who eats beets? I don't even know why beets exist. I don't know. I think because they make a pigment. I think beets are, exist so that you can, before paint was invented, you could do the color red. I don't freaking know. I have no reason. I, I don't, uh, what, who's eating a beet? Who's eating a can of beets? Who's eating a can of beets? Or did she say beans? That would make more sense. But no, you wouldn't put lemon. The lemon and the last of the lemon zest. I mean, you put that in some balsamic vinegar. I mean, you wouldn't do it on beans. You said it's just beets. So freaking weird. Uh, but anyway, how oh, weirdo she is. Uh, so then she uh, starts. She starts talking about some friend that won't go away. And what, what does she have to do? Say that she slept with her husband to make her go away? You keep coming at me and, 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 and you know, that and you were a friend and you're a friend, ex-friend. And you're in my DMs. And, Stop asking me questions. Stop asking me questions. So I take it that whoever this person is, is on her life. And they must have said something, you know, like... How are you? And she's she is still in a hissy fit because this person has obviously rejected her. So <laughs> she starts, what do I have to do to get rid of you? Do I have to say that I slept with your husband? Do you want me to say that I fucked your husband? Will that make you go away? Just go away. And then she sees that two viewers are talking amongst themselves. No cross talk. No cross talk. You know, God forbid anybody else, you know, interact with anybody else because, but God, this is the Lori Beth show. This is the Lori Beth show, lest you ever forget. Okay. So anyway, she starts going off and she just switches her moods and you can, you can see that she went from, you know, pimping the handbags to acting like she was gonna, you know, get, get some new viewers by having the hashtags for the Trisha Paytas and the Peter Mon accident and everything. And oh no, 
Oh no, whoever this is, is under her freaking orange peel like skin. And she could not handle it. She just, so then she knew that person was watching and that's when she started losing her shit. So she just keeps going and then she starts just jabbing the freaking brush blush and everything. You can tell the makeup just starts going on faster and heavier and, and then she's just jabbing that freaking blush brush and just dabbing and tapping and tapping and tapping and everything and blabbing about putting and that her secret to her beauty you know was putting on the vaseline on her lips and big butt lips and um and she got a piercing their idiot got a piercing underneath you know underneath the oh here i'm pointing to you guys you can't see it um the middle of the lip yeah, you know, part chin chin part is right here and then your lip gets and the right there so like i say it really makes this triangle to just really give her that devil like mustache shadow because the mustache that she has those big long spider-like hairs um come down around and then i think maybe it's dirt like old dirt build up and stuff on the skin itself or maybe damage from when she had her her beauty hack of using real sandpaper to do microdermic exfoliation you, you just go and you just use the sandpaper frick what the hell are you are you a piece of plaster no oh, i don't i'm not using sandpaper on my face um <laughs> so anyway she's a jab in the makeup and she's like no no do not talk to each other and stop looking at me stop looking at me get out of here you're not my friend all my ex-friends come back she's going right so then um <laughs> she says that she puts the secret is you, know, you put the vaseline layer on your lips and then you put a layer of vaseline under your eyeballs some crap like that and then she starts playing with her hair <laughs> so then she starts saying that her friend is a bottom feeder because her friend said something about somebody's friend being a riri and how awful that is or that her kids are riri i don't freaking know but she was just like why would i ever take you back when it I, I couldn't even understand all of it because I was laughing so hard because at the same time she's doing this, she's like matting down her hair and all I can see is Sir Elton John look with a cross between Chris Farley with a weird man look with a drag queen in a big fat woman's body. And I can't, I can't, can't do this. I, I was just laughing so hard and I'm going, wait, what are you accusing this person of? Isn't that exactly what you did to Jules? She says some horrible things about Jules' kids. Like, why? What is her freaking hard on obsession with Jules? Like, Jules is just a nice person across the pond who became her friend because they mutually had fibromyalgia. And then Jules barely said something she didn't agree with. I don't know. But then she, like, said... Oh, yeah, you know, your kid is a re re or something horrible. And that, what do you expect it coming from you? I'm like, okay, um, ma'am, what did we expect to come out of you? Okay, I mean, thank God the poor boy got Goonies looks. Um, because. I don't know. And then she, she's talking about she put the Vaseline under her eyeballs. So I don't know. Playing with her hair. And then, now the weird thing is, is that every freaking five minutes on her video, the advertisements that come out are for Lumi. So it's like, do you have a stinky vag? Do you, do you have a smelly butt? You know, are you, are you afraid to lift your armpits up? So why is it that every ad is asking about a smelly butt badge on her on her channel. What a quinky dink. What does it do? I mean, like, are, are the ads, like, smell vision Now, I'm going to tell you, because I actually, I am a friend of the Lumi. Now, um, 
The reason why is because it doesn't have aluminum. And I do believe in the thought process of aluminum having something to do with breast cancer. So if you have an alternative to use that. But uh, I first used the Lumi because I had a horrible chafing problem. I was working a lot and where I live um, is a region notorious for swamp pass. You just sweat. In the summer, you just you just do. You just sweat that the air conditioning can't keep up. So you just sweat. You just sweat. You have to change your clothes a couple, three times a day, right? Very, I live in a very humid region. And I like to wear dresses a lot. And so I had a lot of chafing in a lot of areas. And uh, my groin had some... Uh, Maybe a heat rash along with the chafing. Sorry for the TMI. But I I was watching those Lumi ads. And so I put the Lumi on. Holy shit. I had like a freaking chemical burn in my crotch. It was horrifying. Like a bleeding, just sopping, raw skin diaper rash and a woman my age and the chafing and I mean I couldn't walk I just had to lay there naked with a freaking fan on my twat I mean it hurt so bad and so you know I wrote to the Lumi and I'm like listen you motherfuckers I'm like what kind of shit are you doing I'm like I am a grown ass woman now laying here like a baby in a crib with a freaking diaper rash with a fan on my freaking twat and the AC and everything isn't enough. You don't want pictures of what your freaking venom has done to me. And they were like, ma'am, it is only for skin that is not compromised. If you use the Lumi, um, with raw skin or skin that has a rash, it, 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 it will get in because that's the nature of the product. And they said they would give me my money back and everything. And I'm like, no, you know, no, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to try it. And so I waited till everything was healed. And I'm telling you, it is a really good product and it will save you so much money because especially if you use it, you know, for deodorant on the pits, you put on like a I do the size of a quarter on my pits, but then you do not have to bathe until like, you know, six months later, if you don't want to, you will no longer have pit odor. Like it is really good. Um, I'm a person who loves my, uh, big bubble baths. So, but those are time consuming. So I probably, you know, take a big bubble bath every three days or whatever. And that's no problem with Lumi because there are no more odors that happen. So one could say yes, because my search, um, engine you know two years ago whatever was Lumi because that's how long it's freaking lasted though but so I don't think that's why I'm getting the ads are you guys getting the Lumi the Lumi ads when you um listen to the LBL too um so yeah it lasts for freaking ever so it's like I bought the uh, little sample pack with like the four things four little trial things and uh deodorant and a soap or whatever like two years ago literally and I haven't had to buy since. I mean, I would have went through how many deodorants by then. And I have no more chafing or anything. It's a very good preventative. But if you have any rawness, do not, do not do what I did. So, um, anywho, the man, I mean, LBL kept just primping and primping and wildly primping and matting down her hair and everything. And then she drags out this freaking hot pink suitcase that you might see that an 8 to 12 year old girl carry and she has the hair all of the hair she has all of her wig pieces and everything so then she starts attaching she attaches this one freaking strand of hair look like she scalped somebody and she's got this hair hanging down and she's like sitting there matting it down like it's it's a tail because she's just this butch cut right now you know it's a butchy weird chopped cut it's not a pixie it's not a bob it's not a uh, high and tight. It's not a buzz cut. It's just some horrible Sir Elton John kind of look. And then with her way of horribly frying her hair and it is yellow. Um, and then she clips on a 
freaking tail that goes, you know, maybe she's trying to do her hair down to her ass like, like that Irma. It, it was this freaking tail. This tail. Just to like, she clips on a freaking tail. And she looked freaking ridiculous. So then she's doing that. And then she's like, she's still going off, right? And uh, she's at about about one hour and 15 minutes at this point, right? Um, and uh, <laughs> she is flipping. She's getting angrier as she goes. So whoever this was on there is who she's very, very mad at. Very, very, very mad at. So um, she just starts continuing. She's like, what do I have to do? Say I fucked your husband? Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? You're a user. You used me. What would anybody use her for? What would anybody use LBL for? For popular, popularity? For to know how to put their makeup on? You know how to get ugly prison tattoos? What? What are they going to do? So then she's like, I'm I'm a channel and I, I don't do just one thing. I do the ASMR. I do the makeup. I do the nails. I do the fashion. I am a hodgepodge of a channel. Yeah. That's because you thought that you could take every single channel that is specializes in something and do what they do so that you could hashtag it to maximize the amount of viewers. So you would get viewers from all genres coming to your channel. You thought that would make you YouTube famous and it has made you the freaking clown doing a variety show that you are. She just was going off. And, and she, does anybody remember when she was trying that ASMR stuff? I mean, I'm telling you that ASMR, that ASMR is supposed to be something nice, you know, that puts you to sleep. And they, you talk like this, or there is a consistent noise that would put you in a more relaxed state because it's engaging both parts of your brain. Oh, no, her ASMR was, I'm going to go eat a bag of chips really loud with lip noises. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my fingernails and I'm going to clip them and I'm going to tap them on my steering wheel. Like, that's not ASMR, you jack fuck. And anyway, she's trying to do the makeup because that's how she thought she would get famous before because people were like, oh yeah, just have your own channel. All you have to do is you know, just sit there and do your makeup and talk and, and then you get all these followers. Well, that's if you know how to do your makeup in a way that people like to see. Like, that you are modeling a behavior. Like, I don't know how to do my makeup. I'm really horrible at doing my makeup and I look about 30 years older when I do my makeup. And so I like to watch other people do their makeup because then I'm like, oh, that's how? Because I didn't do my makeup for like freaking 30 years because I was raising kids and now, you know, I'm like, well, I look a little bit like, you know, I have been dead for a week when I wake up. I need to put a little something on, you know, and well, I haven't learned anything from her. And why is she trying to look like Mar Mary Tyler Moore? Where is this new Mary Tyler Moore thing? And then I don't think that anybody has ever looked at her channel for fashion. Like, I want to wear what LBL wears. So you know, hodgepodge, you can stick it up your fat ass. Anyway, um, then she keeps uh, pushing the freaking camera back to give the views of that. I don't know, she's got like a room divider and this large urn. Like, I don't know what all is in there. I don't know how many people's ashes, animal ashes. I don't know. There should still be freaking, I don't know. I don't know what's in this big urn that she keeps like putting the camera at. But because she thinks her, she thinks her furniture is so beautiful. And then she's raging again about no questions, no questions. Don't you ask me questions. And then she's like, every ex-friend comes to me. James, Shawnee, Maria. Yeah, they all come begging back and you're not going to be in my life. And then I'm just laughing because she's going on and on. And, and then... God forbid somebody who's a new person, a new person came on and asked her a question. She's like, you don't come in here and ask a question. You do your research before you come in and ask me a question. Well, what if this was just a real, I, probably it was probably somebody in the troll network, you know, asked her a question that they knew would just piss her off, you know, because you can just control her like the freaking puppet ass she is. Uh, because she <laughs> 
she was raging and this rage went until the she okay she really raged from the one hour and 15 mark to one hour and 34 so if you want to skip all of it to the 115 that's when you could just come on and see the freaking raging raging with a rat tail on and uh, she starts screaming and then she is talking about She's tr she's talking about some Peter Man person. I don't know. I don't know the story, but she's screaming about he shouldn't have done this and he had a seizure and everything and he shouldn't have done that because that because I guess it's big news about this YouTuber who did this. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Her jackass has driven drunk several times and logging, so she's distracted driving while she's been driving drunk, and she has driven drunk several times. We have witnessed it. We have seen it. And she got a ticket for distracted driving. For being on her phone. When she's not supposed to be on her phone. We know that it was distracted driving. Um, But uh, it was something else. I mean, if this person was a new person, that, can you imagine if you were actually like a new person and you just like went in there and you were like, oh, hi, where do you reside? And this weird wombat of a woman starts going off on you like that. I mean, I don't know. And then she's just still going on. She's like, she's like, you know, I do not ask for views. Blah, 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 blah. I don't sit there and, oh, yeah, try this. Oh, this curling iron is the best. Blah, 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 blah. I don't do that. I don't do that. That's because you lost your sponsorships. People, when I first, um, you know, saw her getting sponsorships, I was shocked. And I was figured it was based on the amount of people that she had as subscribers. Subscribers. Um, so I figured, you know, okay, well, if you get to this number, then they say, you know, hey, you know, would you like some gratis in exchange for this? That's what those Yuliana rings were, or whatever. That she, you know, got them for gratis and then talked about them. And then that condition, the conditioner that she put in her hair, Every time before she goes to get a hand on, she puts this, she would put like slather on this conditioner, like use half of the freaking jar and then talk about it. And the instructions for that product were, you know, use a size of a pea or something. I mean, so she was just, she was maligning the product is basically what she was doing. So she, she lost her sponsorship for that. She lost her sponsorship. I don't think J. Julia would have, J. 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 Julia, Julia, how are you say that, would have, um, she she was she was not a good model for the product and then she was saying that this company sponsored her and this company sponsored her and there's no way it's that she was trying to act like all these other people did i i believe that she got a couple that are probably just automatic but then she was acting like all these other people were and then oh all that stopped but she's trying to tw twist it and say she doesn't do that yeah, you don't do that because you're not asked to do it if you were asked to do it for money you'd do it because you're freaking you you want everything to be about currency about giving you money for you doing something for you just freaking existing you want money for it from other people and, uh, so then she, uh, starts putting more and more concealer and more and more highlighter, highlighter. And then she's talking about how she's just, how you need to just jab it in there. You need to just, well, tap it in there is what she calls it. But I mean, she's just sitting there putting so much makeup on and it just looks worse and worse and wet and matted and hideous. And just, she's just going and she's just, she just, you know that this is from her haunting makeup counters. You know it's from her haunting Sephora. You know she's trying to act like she's a big makeup lady. And she's not. She didn't learn a thing. She has to put her LBL style on everything. And so then she starts going off about some Meng chick or whatever that has a YouTube that has like 100,000 or whatever. And her parents said they were proud of her for doing that. She's going off about how having subbies on YouTube is nothing to be proud of. It's just that she had a fashion. She had a fashion vlog and it got viewers and her parents should never say that they're proud of anything and she they didn't do anything now Burke Burke 
Burke is somebody that you should be proud of because he's a person who sits there and edits his videos and does that. You know, you should be proud of Burke, but not nobody should be proud of the man. Like, all this stuff, she's just going off. Burke took an acting class. One. Okay? And he learned how to edit the film. He did that. So Burke's taken one class and she thinks that he's a he's a Grammy winner. And even she has her outfit picked to what she would wear at the Grammys when Burke's getting his awards. I mean, it's just bizarre. I mean, it's the same crap, different day. Um, like I say, I would always advise putting her videos on play uh, on the double playback speed um if you want to take it down and take it off the double at the 115 to the 134 to you know listen to her just going off i would i would do that but otherwise i've saved you from that i've said everything that she said pretty much and that's a wrap folks i hope that you go ahead and have a great week i hope that i brought you a laugh or two um, YouTube keeps disabling my comments, um, but I found out how to put them back on. So as always, I see your comments. I love your comments. I love, um, that I have more people joining the troll patrol so that we can, um, continue to do good and that no more innocent animals or vulnerable people will be taken advantage of by this, uh, sloth of a human. And I love sloth, so I'm not saying anything about that. But I'm just saying in the way that she is, in the way that she will not work. She's a sloth. Um, so have a great week. And I will be doing another recording soon. Thanks for all your support. And sub down below so you'll notif you get a notification for when I do my videos. And here's some AMRSR for you. I don't have nails. I am actually a person who does housework and cleans and so I don't I don't have the nails. I actually have to have to live my life. I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a taking care of woman. Alright? Okay, thanks for listening. Bye bye.